I was into African spirituality for about four years, solid. Mm. I'll say about five if I'm if I'm totally honest. Mm-hmm. God is telling me to say five, so I'm gonna say four. Mm-hmm. Five. Um, it started in college. I had a professor that basically was just like Christmas is pagan and blah blah blah. blah. He was breaking everything down. And in that moment, I felt like everything I had ever been taught was a lie. Now, here is where I have to be fully transparent. Mm. It's easy to manipulate a person out of their relationship with God if they're already in a vulnerable place Mm -hmm. because of something that happened. Mm. So I was. I had issues with my church home that I was with at the time. Churches got to be careful. And so when you are already thinking negatively towards your spirituality and your belief and mm-hmm. you know if you already have negative feelings towards it yeah then you know the adversary can use that as an opportunity mm-hmm. and say mm-hmm. oh she mad at you anyway right she'll perfect believe, she'll believe anything at this point yeah. like she's mad at she's mad at you anyway it's yeah. perfect perfect and so that's what happened um <clears throat> i had a professor that was telling us all of these kinds of things and i started to look into it i started to look into some of the authors that he was recommending um, and I'm trying to think. That's what being a teacher, bro. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta pray where you take your kid. Mm-hmm. Because. And you also, I mean, college is a little different with adults. Mm-hmm. So you gotta know when to take things like a grain of salt. Right. And I didn't take it like a grain of salt because I was already, I think, vulnerable. And I didn't really have. Mm, that's a lie. I had a, I, I don't want to lie, but I do feel like a lot of my relationship with God was based off of my mom's testimony. Mm. And I think God was trying to push me in a direction to have my own. Yeah. So, of course, you got to go through things. Yeah. Right? So, that was the beginning of oh, my... There's, there's, what they say? There's no testimony without the test? Okay. 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 So, okay. All right. There's, literally. <laughs> so, it's in the word. <clears throat> so, that's kind of what happened. Um, I feel like I had a, a very, um, like... I was getting dreams and I was dealing with things in my life that I already knew God was trying to communicate with me to deal with my struggles a lot better. Mm -hmm. And because that was already happening, I knew that God was real and I knew that God was speaking to me. Um, But my faith about where I'd learn more about him, Mm -hmm. which would be the Bible, was wavering. Mm -hmm. And so... I started to try to read. I'm like, you know, now just to give some context, my mom uh, was non is non non denominational mm-hmm. Christian, or you know, um, my father, you know, he dibbled in a lot of different things, but even he, you know, was very big on the Bible. He mm-hmm. was he was actually the one that gave my mom the Bible. Oh, really? On her walk. Mm-hmm. Wow. She wasn't. Wow. Yeah. My father was the one that gave my mom her Bible and was just like, you need to read your Bible. Wow. Yeah. Ironically, he was my father, you know, he wasn't <clears throat> the super present parent, but he was the one that told my mom, like, when she was going through her depression and she was dealing similarly to what, what I was dealing with. It's so ironic how many parallels there mm. is between my mom and I, but he was the one that recommended the Bible for her, wow. told her to read it. There were many of things that I had gone through that made me feel like I had to have soul control over mm. so much. That makes sense. And so feeling like that lack of control, I was just like, I don't feel control with a lot of different aspects of my life. And my faith was one of them mm. because of things that were happening around me from people that I trusted, people that I thought were in certain positions and places because they earned it, not because of God any kind of nepotism or oh, okay. whatever. It's like they would, you know, if, when God appoints people, people fall, people mess up. But it's something about being somewhere that you're supposed to be that you still will lead your flock. Yeah. You know, and so things are kind of getting out of hand. And I just threw my hands up. I was like, listen, I need control. Yeah. And so I say, y'all are showing out. Everybody's messing up, and it's so crazy that we condemn God for things that people do in God's people do. name. It's and God is like... People, it's things that people do in God's name. It has nothing to do with God. But at that point, when you're looking for an out, yeah. you'll find it. you find you'll it. You'll find it. So you'll... Oh, God, well, you let this happen and other, you know. Yeah. And it's just... Anyway, once I realized that I was becoming more intrigued in other things, I just kind of went down this rabbit hole. So I was... Do, rabbit holing on YouTube and Google and all these different things. I'm just like, you know, when, you know, but if you're looking for things that are going to negate Jesus, then you're going to find it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And that, that was what it was. Mm. I was looking for things that 
was going to make me feel better about the fact that I was mad. Mm -hmm. So I looked in the Bible and I was just like, I don't see black people. These is Mediterranean, Mediterranean, these is Middle Easterns, these is not black people. Hold on. These is not black people. This is not our story. Boom. Loud and disrespectful. And I kind of just was like, I'm standing ten toes on it. And I started to expose myself to African spirituality. It was, um, I had books. I had one book called Mojo Working. Don't give them the names out. We don't people sorry. searching it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want y'all to look at mm -hmm. any of those books. But it was like books that I was really trying to figure out what it was. I don't want to say voodoo, but a lot of it was hoodoo. Sure. Can you explain the difference between hoodoo and voodoo? Hoodoo is more medicinal. Voodoo is kind of more comic. You're trying to like... You're really playing with spirits. Yeah. Basically like I'm trying to get involved in what happens yeah. to this person. Yeah. That's voodoo. Hoodoo is a little bit of both. Um, more ma from a medicinal aspect, it's kind of just like they'll Like have... essential oils? Mm -hmm. and... So I kind of went down that path and just exposed myself to more books and started getting involved in ancestral practices. Um, mm. I purchased crystals, I had sage, I had, um, I was even doing tarot readings, like mm. not me doing them or you go going to. to them, but I would watch like oh. the women that would do the, what they call them? What do they call them? On like, YouTube? Yeah, like on YouTube, but like they are <clears throat> predictions. Mm. So they make predictions. And I will watch. And me wanting to be in that level of control, me wanting to have that control, I was okay with experimenting with things that put me in God's position. Mm. So that's what astrology did. I don't want God's job. It allowed me. It allowed astrology, and amongst other things, astrology was just a part of some of, of the things that people that are into ancestral practices tend to get into. Um, things were communicating with me, and I didn't know why they were communicating with me spirits but it would think i i had invited them into my mind my heart my soul my body i did a, i had did uh i did a thing over myself i can call it a ritual now but at the time i thought it was something else but i did a ritual over myself Man, how did you do that? you just spoke it or you, mm -mm. Oh. i had stones with a i had purchased these stones with a guy that i was intimately involved with we weren't in a relationship but mm -hmm. that was what it was it was just a situation ship. And I had purchased um, crystals while I was involved with him. And my heart is racing because this, this story is crazy. But <laughs> basically, I had put the put the line myself down. Oh, the, the chakra stuff that be seen. Mm -hmm. mm. Over my womb, which Whoa. dangerous. Don't do that. Wow. Don't do that. But I was basically like, oh, just in tapping into your femininity and all of this other nonsense that they love to pull the feminine energy. Um, which the Bible just addresses as woman or wisdom, right? Because nothing is new under the sun. The Bible right. has everything. <laughs> right. It has everything. Right. There's no such thing as defi divine feminine. It's wisdom, and it's in the Bible, and you're, you're good. But yeah, I did what I did or whatever. I like, aligned it, trying to channel this divine femininity or whatever. And how is after divine? Feminine, why, what, what is that? Why, why do you even want it? What is it? Goddess. Right? It's this this God complex. I want to be Once a again, goddess. Right. Goddess. That, okay. It all goes back to that. It's okay. the same formula. Gotcha. Same formula. I did it. I prayed, you know, whatever, whatever over myself. And then I put the stones in the window to charge them in the moon. Does that actually charge? Girl, I don't know. Okay. What I do know <laughs> is that something happened. Okay. I put them in the window. Okay. And I could not sleep. I wrote the dream down. I have all my dreams on my phone, y'all. Because all of the times that God gave me information i wrote it down and so which is I very good it. practice by the way i had to i had to and so i wrote it down i had woke up one time at 11 30 p.m after I, I had gone to sleep and then i woke up again at two when i woke up at 11 and change um i just could not sleep it was this restless feeling mm -hmm. of like as if there was a presence in my room and it just kept going back and forth just going back and forth mm -hmm. so i'm like what is it the wind so i closed the window and i noticed that my stones were there so I was like, maybe it's too much energy. <laughs> maybe it's just too much energy. So I took the, too much caffeine. <laughs> too much energy. So I took the stones out the window and put them in my drawer. It was too much energy in your room. She wasn't lying. Yeah. <laughs> put them right in my drawer. And so I went back to sleep, woke up at two. After I had a dream that my drawer flew open and hit the wall. So I woke up because the, in the dream, my drawer flew 
my like top dresser it flew and hit the wall and it was a loud bang and it woke me up out my sleep so i look i'm like who throwing stuff in my room the energies looking crazy <laughs> and so the energies or demons <laughs> or spirits right. i hate that um, energy, so huh? i saw it hit the back wall and i sat up i'm like huh so i got up and I got them out the out of my dresser, mm -hmm. and I threw them out of the window. And I was finally, that's a quick decision. Yeah, I was like, I'm not playing with y'all. Y'all not throwing stuff in my house. We not doing this. <laughs> Something funny you came out doing like the bag, mother. Absolutely not. I'm not playing with y'all. About to get some oil and start banging on these walls. Y'all playing with me? Cause I already know where to go. That's, right. that's the thing. It'd be a hoax. You'd be playing with yourself. Right. You lying. Lying. Cause you knew lying. what to do. The minute something happened, I knew exactly what to do. Right. That's, that's the thing. And so, threw it out the window. Fell asleep. Um. Then I had another dream that all of this is happening in the same mm. night. I fell back asleep. The dream that I had, I was throwing up, uh, purging like a, a purple fluid. It kind of looked like a witch's brew that you see mm, in the cartoons or yeah. whatever. And I was purging, throwing it up. And then it was flushing down the toilet. And in the back, I was hearing gospel music. I laid down, went to sleep in the dream. I was already sleeping. Mm. But I had laid down after throwing up in the dream, laid down, went to sleep. And I had started to experience a sleep paralysis. And that's just basically, the, you know, they, they have a scientific explanation for it, but I truly do believe that some, spiritual. it was something holding you down. So I actually, I actually seen the physical stuff actually hold me down yeah, in my dream. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it's no joke. And so I'm sitting there like fighting. And then there was an angel in my dream that came in the shape of my mom. And I do believe that God was intentional about that because I think God was trying to tell me what your mother taught you was true. Because in that moment, my whole beliefs was being, I was in question, right? But mm -hmm. my mom introduced me to the truth already. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to tell me, like, your mom was right, you know? So that was the lady that he sent to comfort me mm -hmm. in my sleep paralysis. There mm -hmm. was an angel that took the shape of my mom. Mm -hmm. And it was so real that the angel was rocking me, and I looked because I thought my mom actually came into my room and was comforting me because I had a crazy night. Mm -hmm. But no, I woke up and it was, there was no one there. It was just me in my room. Mm. But that was a dream that had to happen for me to get rid of the paraphernalia, the crystals, the everything. After that, I threw everything out. Yeah, what was some like, stuff you yeah. was involved in? Like, what Because it's almost like the, the starter pack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Crystals, mm -hmm. incense, mm -hmm. weed. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is pills part of it or that's a different realm no it was shrooms shrooms <laughs> and all of the activity right. that pushes the act the endorphins for you to be out of have out, of, out of the world yeah but there's a reason why god says to be of sober mind because any other thing is trickery for the for the enemy to play with you yeah. if you're not sober he can use you being vulnerable 